Well, I've been ministering on the series of teaching called 20 Ways That God Leads or Guides. And there's actually more than 20 ways that God speaks to us. But we've been teaching on the 20 ways, and actually tonight I'm on number 14. Now, before I share number 14 with you, I just want to very quickly mention the ways that God leads us and guides us. The believer, those who love Christ. The first way, of course, is through Jesus Christ. As we look through the life of Christ, the character of Christ, the nature of Christ, the per personality of Christ, uh, the works of Christ, we see the will of God. Because Jesus said, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. He said he was the brightness of his glory, the express image of his person. And so he was the exact representative. And matter of fact, it says in the book of Hebrews, chapter 1, God, who at sundry times and in diverse manners, spake unto the fathers by the, the prophets, hath in these last days spoken unto us by his Son, whom he hath appointed heir of all things. So the first way that God will speak to us and lead us and guide us, and the greatest revelation, the greatest revelation of the Father that anybody could ever have is through the person of Jesus Christ. For instance, we know it's God's divine will to heal everybody because it says in Acts chapter 10, verse 38, that Jesus went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed of the devil. So therefore, we understand that Christ is the voice of the Father in the earth to this day. The second way that God leads us, of course, is the word. The word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. So the word of God. The third way that God leads us is our conscience. Uh, it says, the, the, the spirit of man is the candle of the Lord, searching all the inward parts of the belly. The fourth way is a still, quiet voice. It says, and you will hear a voice behind thee saying, speaking to your ear when you turn to the right hand and when you turn to the left, this is the way, walk ye in it. The fifth way that God will speak to us is what we call through divine perception. It's almost like a helium balloon that rises up in your belly. And there's, there's many times I perceive something by the Spirit of God. Uh, it's by the Holy Ghost. The sixth way that God speaks to us sometimes, and it's in the scriptures, is audible. God does speak to his people at times audibly. The seventh way is what I call a divine unction. And a divine unction is like an urgency. And we're talking about being led by the Spirit of God. For Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice and another do not follow. And so there's a divine unction. And what I'm sharing with you right now are all ways that God has already spoken to me. As I have sought his face, I've never sought an experience. I've never sought a manifestation. Uh, I've never sought a vision. I've never sought a dream. I've never sought any of these things, but they've happened to me in my life. And so there is what we would call an unction. The eighth way, of course, is a prophetic word. Of course, the Bible is prophecy, uh, but a prophetic word that somebody can give to you, it will always agree with the word of God, with the character of Christ, and it will witness in your heart. So prophecy, tongues, and interpretation, which equals prophecy. Number 10, visions. He said, your young men will have visions and your old men will dream dreams. And so God does lead us, guide us, speak to us through visions and dreams. Number 12, angelic visitations. Uh, it's amazing how many angelic visitations are revealed to us in the Word of God. And I've had the opportunity and the privilege of having angelic visitations. Now, I'm not talking about imagining something with your mind. I'm talking about where literally angels come. And for instance, after Jesus had overcome the temptations in the wilderness, it says the angels of the Lord ministered unto him. And then when he was in the garden uh, uh, of Gethsemane, as he was sweating as it was great drops of blood, it says, that an angel came and strengthened him. And so there are angelic visitations. Number 13, the last one I discussed, was signs and wonders. God does speak to us through signs and wonders, through miracles. Every time somebody gets healed, every time somebody gets touched, every time somebody, it, 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 you might even see somebody being touched by the Spirit of God because they're being filled with great joy. Or they might be filled with weeping, or they might be shaking, or they might be trembling. That is God touching them. That is a sign and a wonder. That is a miracle. People getting healed from cancer, blind eyes, leprosy, deafness, being raised from the dead. That is God talking. That is God speaking. And even when God begins to prod his judgment, like he did with Egypt, he revealed himself by mighty signs and wonders to the Egyptians and to the whole world at that time. Uh, before the children of Israel got to the land of Canaan, uh, they had, the, all the Canaanites had already heard about what God did 
in Egypt and how he split the Red Sea and how he destroyed the army of Pharaoh and how the firstborn died and how the, the, the Nile River was turned to blood. Everybody knew that was God speaking through signs and wonders and miracles. Now, the 14th way I'd like to share with you how God speaks, and I'll just mention it right away, is he speaks to us and he leads and guides us through peace and joy. Through peace and joy. And there's many scriptures that deal with this particular subject. In Isaiah 55, verse 11, it says, So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish the thing which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereunto I send it. Now, so he's sending his word, and then notice what it does. It says, For you shall go out with joy and be led forth with peace. You'll be led by peace. You'll have peace that passes understanding. Joy unspeakable. So when you're in the midst of something, and when you're trusting God, when you're believing God, and when the word of God comes, it brings peace and it brings joy. You know, fear has torment. When faith is in operation, it brings joy and it brings peace. Not the peace as the world understands it. I mean, when I was in the world, I thought I had peace. You know, I used to smoke dope and pop pills and drink alcohol, and I thought I had peace. But until I discovered God's peace, I didn't realize that was artificial, that was fake. You know, sometimes we, oh, if I could just go to the Bahamas and, and, and kick back, put my feet up on a wood stump and just drink an ice-cold lemonade and let the sun shine on me, and we think that's peace. It's not peace. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a temporary uh, satisfaction, but it's not peace that passes understanding. And what it means by that, and we'll look at these scriptures, a peace that passes understanding means it's beyond your mind. It's beyond your imagination. People look at you and they go, how come you're not falling apart? How can you be so calm? How can you be so restful? How come you're not upset? Because the peace of God that passes understanding, God is leading us with peace. He's guiding us with peace. And, and like I said, there's many scriptures, and it says, and, and it expresses this joy. You go out with joy, you be led forth with peace, and it says this, the mountains and the hills shall break forth before you into singing. All the trees of the field shall clap their hands. And it doesn't mean that's literally happening, but that's how you feel. I remember a good friend of mine, uh, Dale Clouser. He, uh, he was all wrapped up in drugs and alcohol, just like I was. And he was standing on his back porch one, one morning, and he felt like killing himself. And he's standing there, and he, he finally cries out to God. He says, Jesus. And he asked Christ into his heart. He said, the minute he did that, all of a sudden, it's like nature itself became alive to him. It's like all of nature was singing. And he didn't realize it at the time, but that was the peace that passes understanding. The peace that makes you feel like everything's going to be all right. I, I know it doesn't look like it's going to be all right. And, and I, don't have no, I, I don't have no natural reason to think everything's going to be all right. But it's going to be all right. And uh, I remember my sister Debbie telling me when my mom, and I had led my mom to the Lord, and she had asthma, and she was only 66 years old, and, or maybe she was 68, but she, uh, she went to the doctor, to, and he, he changed her prescription, and what he didn't tell her was that what she was getting was a much stronger prescription, and that she needed to be very careful with it, and that she needed to you know, slowly come off the old and come to the new. She didn't know better. So she went back to her house where my sister lived with her, and next thing you know, she feels like she's, she can't breathe, and what she didn't know is her heart was clamping up on her because of this medication. So she's laying in bed, and, <clears throat> and finally, you know, one night, she's, my, my sister Debbie can hardly hear her, and, and she's calling out Debbie, Debbie, and so my sister felt like something was wrong, so she went to her bedroom, and here she was, just couldn't breathe. They called the ambulance, and as they were taking her away, uh, my sister Debbie said that my mom surely was just filled with such peace. And she squeezed her hand and she said, Debbie, it's okay. It's going to be all right. And she passed on to be with the Lord. But see, she had that peace, that peace that says, it's going to be okay. It's going to be all right. Now, I'm not talking about lying prophets. 
that tell people peace, 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 even when they are out of the will of God, because that's what the false prophets do. The false prophets say, you can be out of the will of God, you can do what you want, you can live how you want, the blood of Jesus covers it, and you're okay the way you are. That's false prophets. Real prophets will warn people. All the prophets from the beginning, Elijah warned the people. Ezekiel warned the people. Isaiah warned the people. They didn't come to comfort the people, except if they were living in holiness and righteousness and obedience. But if they were living in sin, they came to tell them, hey, listen, you, you got to repent. But there is a peace that passes understanding when you're in the will of God. And matter of fact, in Philippians chapter 4, verse 5, it says, in verse 6, be careful for nothing. And this is Philippians 4, 6. I'm sure you, you're aware of it. Be careful for nothing. That means don't be worried about anything. But in everything, in everything, by prayer and supplication, listen, with thanksgiving. Now, I want to emphasize that. I know I'm not teaching on the subject of faith. But when you are really praying and believing and you really are operating in faith, the next response is thanksgiving. Now, thank you, Lord, it's done. It says, when you pray, believe that you receive and you shall have. Well, if you pray and believe that you receive, the next response is, thank you, Lord. Now, Lord, I cried out to you. I called upon you. I asked you, and I know it's according to your will and your word. So now, Lord, I thank you. And it says, prayer, supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. Now, listen. And the peace of God, the peace, the tranquility, the rest, the harmony, the unity of God, which passes all understanding, the natural mind doesn't understand it, so keep your hearts and minds and your minds through Christ Jesus. That means there's almost like a protected shield wrapped around your mind from the fiery darts of the enemy one when you really are walking in the will of God and you have believed God and you're thanking God and you're trusting God and now you're being led forth with peace. I've discovered many times I get, I get into situations and I think God enables us and empowers us and it gives us according to our position within the body. Now, what I mean by that, God does not respect our people. But I guarantee the gifts that were operating in Paul were different than the gifts that were operating in Timothy or that were different than operating in, in Ananias, the disciple. Why? Because God equips you according to the position that you possess. He gives you giftings according to where you are going to work. You know what I mean? I mean, even in natural, there are some people who are really gifted to work, work with wood. Some people have a gifting to work with metal. Some people have a gifting to work with clothes. Some people have a gift to work with food. There are giftings. In the body of Christ, there's different giftings. And one thing that I have discovered very important in my heart, in my mind, is the peace of God, dealing with people. I run into people, and outwardly, it seems like everything is okay with them. You know, they're spiritual, they're walking with God, they know God. But it's almost like, it's almost like a cat or like a, 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 a person. Have you ever taken your fingernails and scraped them on a chalkboard? It hurts. Well, something, something, I've run into people, and I'm not judging their hearts. I'm not looking, because outwardly it looks like, wow. But on the inside, the Lord is saying, something's not right. Something's wrong. And, and you're not judging the heart. You say, okay, Lord, show me. Uh, the other day, I was at a restaurant with my family. <clears throat> and we know the family that owned the restaurant. It's a Chinese restaurant. And they mentioned a, a young lady who had started working for them. I didn't, never met her, never knew her. I saw this young lady walking out. And I thought, that's who they're talking about. And right away, by the spirit, I perceived some things. I perceived about three different things about her. And I mentioned these things. And he said, well, how do you know those things? And I said, are they accurate? Are they correct? Yeah, but how did you know them? I said, by the Spirit of God. There's things I just know by the Spirit of God. But there's that, that times when, when it, it just something's wrong. It just something's wrong. I don't know what's wrong. I, you know, I don't have peace. 
I don't have peace. Something's wrong. Now, sometimes people don't have peace because they're not in the will of God. There's many times in my life when I get out of the will of God, I lose the peace of God. That's the voice of God talking to me. That's when, when it's, I call it a velvety feeling. I don't want to use the word feeling, but it's a velvety sensation in your heart. You just know in your heart, and it's not suspicion. It's just something ain't right. And you keep it to yourself because the Bible says a wise man holds it until afterwards, but a fool others of his mind. But something just ain't right. Something is going on here. Something is taking place. Uh, matter of fact, you, you can ask some of the guys around here that work here. There's times when I'll see something in my spirit, I'll perceive something, or I won't have peace, and I just keep my mouth zipped, and a little bit later on, maybe after a week or two weeks or three weeks, I, cause, because, I, you know, a lot of times people try to hide stuff from the pastor. I hate to tell you that. They try to keep everything, well, we don't want to bother the pastor, or they don't want the pastor to know, but I, I almost always know before, any, before anybody else does. Why? Why would God show me that? Because I'm the pastor, you know? And so... I, don't, I can't tell you how many times I've said to people around here, I said, what's going on with so-and-so? What do you mean? I said, something's not right. What's going on? Well, you know, Pastor, it's not no big deal. I said, I, I already know what's going on. And I'll, I'll mention it. They said, well, how'd you know that? I said, by the Spirit of God. I, I knew that by the Spirit of God. I knew things were going on that weren't right. I can't always put my thumb on it, but if I wait long enough, it will manifest because the Bible says that it will manifest. Everything that is hidden will be made known. Amen? But it says the peace of God which passes all understanding. It passes your understanding. You cannot understand this with your human mind. So you might as well not even figure it out. But it's a peace that passes understanding. But the next verse says, finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, Whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. So you understand that that atmosphere by which God can lead you by peace and joy, it only comes when your mind is stayed on him. And we'll see that in a minute. Your mind's got to stay on God. God will lead you. God will take you forth with joy and lead you forth with peace. But your mind... Your thoughts have got to be stayed on God. That's where you're tuned in to what God is saying. If your mind is on the world, your mind is on politics, your mind is on finances, your mind is, I mean, meditating on this stuff, you, you, he won't be able to lead you, he won't be able to guide you. How many people, I believe with all my heart, that have died because they didn't hear the voice of God, because they weren't living in that place where their mind was stayed on the Lord? Well, like I said, back in 2007, I think it was, when the bridge collapsed over the Mississippi River, we would have been on that bridge, but I, I had an unction, get off of the bridge, get off the bridge. I didn't have peace. See, you'll discover that in all the times that God speaks to you and leads you and guides you, if you don't have that peace along with that guidance, then you know it's not God. But I sensed I, I, there was a disturbance in my heart and get off the highway. So I got off the highway and then, and, and then later on we found out in the day that the bridge collapsed and we would have been on it. And, and Jesus said this in John 14, 27, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Not, let not your hearts be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Now, your heart should be troubled and it should be afraid if you're out of the will of God. So it's not talking to people out of the will of God. So if you're out of the will of God, um, you know, sometimes... When, we, when people are tormented, especially you're going to find out. I've, I've gone through this. How many have ever been tormented and you couldn't sleep at night? Let me tell you something. When you're tormented, it's because you're out of the will of God. In some way, I, I don't know how. Maybe it's because you're worrying about something. You're trying to hide something. None of you have ever tried to hide anything. I know you have never done that. You, you had your own motives. But... There's times, though, I was laying in bed, and my heart was right with God, but my heart was troubled. And it says, let not your heart be troubled. And I said, Lord, my heart is troubled. What's going on? And I would get up and walk the floor and pray until the peace of God came, or the Lord would speak to me and say, this is what's going on. Well, true, true experience. I was working in Broken Air, Oklahoma, at a public school late at night, and my wife and I were going to Bible school. 
And as I'm, buff I'm buffering the floor, I could take you to that room right now. I remember, I mean, we're talking 35 years ago, I'm buffering the floor. And all of a sudden, I heard the voice of God say to me, he said, there's a man there to rape your wife. Man, woo, I never heard that before. And, be and there had been a man going around in our community raping and killing women in Broken Arrow. And uh, I stopped buffering, and I began to cry to God, and I began to pray. I didn't have a phone. She didn't have a phone at the house. We couldn't afford a phone, and I didn't have a cell phone in those days. And so I'm crying out to God, and then I, I kept praying until I had peace. And then the peace came. I was no longer, okay, it's all right. You'll be led forth with joy, and he'll lead you with peace. Led forth with peace. So I, I, peace hit my heart. So I got home that night, and I said to my wife, what happened? There was somebody at the house at such and such a time. She said, yeah, there was a man here. Came from children's services, asking me all kinds of personal questions. Basically, up out of the blue, he acted like, oh, I got to go out to my car and get something. He ran out to the car, never came back. We called children's services. Not only do they not send people after 5 o'clock out, they don't have no men that work for them. They're all women. So that man was there that night to get my wife. And... But when I got peace, when I got peace in my heart. Now, see, this is the key. When you lose your peace, you know, just don't ignore it. Find out why don't I have peace. Now, that doesn't mean that you're leaning to the understanding of your own mind because your mind is going to come up with all kinds of weird ideals. All you got to do is pray. Okay, Lord, I don't know what's going on. Father, you know what's happening. But when you're in the will of God, the peace of God, I was riding between two gang members. I had come back to uh, 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 Wisconsin, right next to, uh, uh, close to Chicago. And I had gone, and I was trying to reach this gang I used to run with. We didn't have a name, but, and, and the one guy's name was Gary Kakowski. He was a big man, big man. And the other guy that was in between was, was uh, 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 Claire Flintrop. And he was a big man. Now, Claire had hair down beyond his shoulders. He was just like, he looked like an Indian. I think he had some Indian blood in him. These guys were rough, man. I had seen him in gunfights and everything, and you don't mess with him. And Gary had already been in federal prison, and I'm sitting in between them. I've been preaching Jesus to him, and we're driving down, and we had an old Chevy Bel Air, I think it was, and it had the old steel sliders for air conditioning and heating, and he, they carried guns and knives with him. And here, this was a homemade knife. This was a big old puppy that he had shoved into the air, air vents. It just, I don't know, it just went in. And all of a sudden, before I know it, he grabbed that thing. And I saw him, when he grabbed it, he pulled it out. And he lifted it up. Demons got in him. And everything went into what I call slow motion. It's in a realm of the spirit. That's happened to me numerous times where I enter into another realm. Everything is slow motion. And his big old arm came, and I saw that knife coming right down from my gut. He was literally going to kill me. A demon was in him. He was going to shove that knife through my gut. Now, a couple of days later, he shot me with a shotgun. That's another story, with a 12-gauge shotgun. And the gun went off, aimed at me, and nothing happened. I mean, it went off. And nothing happened. And I walked up and took the gun out of his hand. In both situations, as that knife's coming towards my gut, I find myself, I'm not even doing it. God must have took a hold of my hands. They came up. I was only 19 years old. Grabbed a hold of his wrist. The knife came down, sliced right down between my legs, and went all the way down into that chair. Now, you know, that's pretty tough because them, them old chairs were full of springs. And then he pulled it up again, and once again, just slicing right down next to my legs and my privates. Whew, right there trying to get me, trying to get me. I think he tried to stab me three times, or up to, between three to five. But during this whole time, I've got that peace that passes understanding. Absolute utter peace. I am not lying to you. Complete. Now, there's been times I haven't had peace in my throat. My, t my, my heart was in my throat. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Have you ever panicked? Have you ever lost it? The other day when Jesse and I were out here and that fire happened, that should have been something to get us excited, wasn't it, Jess? But I'm telling you, honest to God, and, when, and Jess can tell you, when, when the fire was all put out, I wasn't shaking. I wasn't trembling. I wasn't, and yet it, was, it could have burned down the building, man. I mean, it was terrible. Man, gas ablaze everywhere. You know, the tire's burning. The plastic buckets are burning, man. But I've got that peace that passes understanding. And it's not stupidity. Some people say, oh, you're just too stupid to be afraid. <laughs> but, you know, and when it got done, and, and a cop car came around the corner, and he took that knife, and he threw it out the window. And I'm sitting there, and it's like I'm sitting in heaven. See, I really believe that the peace that passes understanding is the taste of heaven on the earth. 
You just, you know that you know that you know everything's going to be all right. You don't know how it's going to be all right. You don't know how it's going to turn up, but you just know it's going to be okay. And that's what it says. But your mind has got to stay on him. And Jesus said, peace I leave with you. He said, my peace. So notice, it's, it's his peace. He's leading us and guiding us. I call it the green light, red light syndrome. You know what I mean? You come up to a green light, it means go. And you come up to a red light and you stop. Now, you, you can have peace in both situations. But when the green light means go, you got to go. And when the red light says stop, you got to stop. Because how many of you have ever had anxiety because you ran through a red light? I have. The other day I was coming through. It was yellow. I thought, I'll make it. And I got in the middle, and it turned red. And I'm thinking, ah, oh, no, man, if there's cameras, I'm going to get a ticket. Now, I'm sure none of you ever do that. You try to beat the yellow, right, yellow light. You know what I mean? But, I mean, when there's a green light, hey, I can go through this. When there's a red light, you stop. And if you don't stop, then, there's a, then you know you begin. There's a panic attack. There's a, uh-oh, what's going on? You're out of the will of God. You know you're out of the will of God. So we've got to really learn how to walk with this. Now, I don't know spiritually. Spiritually, now, you may not know as God has traffic cameras. Every time you run a red light, God says, I saw you, boy. I saw you, boy. I saw what you did. And you know in your heart, God, I should have gone through that red light. I sure hope I got away with it. No, you need to repent. Say, Lord, I'm sorry for going through that red light. If we, it really, I don't think it's as difficult to walk with God as we make it. The problem is we want to run, we want to re, we want to run red lights. We want to run red lights. We want to do it our way. And, and all you're responsible to do is to obey the voice of God. That's really your only job. Obey God. God says, pray, pray. God says, speak the word, speak the word. God says, go here, go there. God says, say this, you say that. God says, don't say that, don't say that. That's all that Jesus did. You know that what made Jesus success? The Father told Jesus what to do. So you saw Jesus going up into the mountains late at night to pray. Do you know why? He didn't decide he was going to go up in the mountains. The Father said, come up here, son. I want to talk to you for a while. Come up higher. And he said, okay, Father. And he went. I mean, that's the kind of relationship that Jesus had with his Father. Just, okay, Father. Well, <clears throat> let the guys go across the sea. Send them on their way. Because he only did what the Father told him to do. So the father said, send your disciples over the Galilean Sea. Okay. Because people say, well, why did Jesus walk on the water? Because he, because the father told him to. Well, why did he do this? The father told him to. It's simply hearing the voice of God. And so it's very important for us to hear the voice of God. So, uh, John 16, These things I have spoken unto you that ye that in me you might have peace. Notice, in me you will have peace. Listen, in the world you shall have tribulation. But be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. Notice he says, have peace and be filled with good cheer. That means happy. <laughs> be filled with cheer. Why? Because I have overcome the world. For words, I'm in you, I've overcome, you will overcome. Um, it, it, it's... it's um, my wife, is, she must have picked it up from her mother and her mother and her mother. And sometimes the kids, our kids would get hurt. They'd done something stupid. My wife never, never, oh, what's wrong? Come here. Let me hold you. She'd always say, you're going to be okay. You'll grow up and have kids. That's what she would say. You'll be okay. You'll grow up and have kids. Now, she must have got that from her mother. But what she was saying is, don't make a mountain out of a molehill. People love to make mountains out of molehills. I mean, I literally had a woman who left here because she said I didn't shake her hand. I don't remember not shaking her hand. I can only, you know, be so many places at one time. But people do. They make mountains out of molehills. And then there's other people who take mountains and turn them into molehills in their own life. I think that's good. You know, Goliath, David said, eh, who's that guy? He's just a non-circumcised. I mean, come on, look at him. He's a giant, man. He's a monster of a man. He's been a champion since he was a kid. You know how I many people he killed? Everybody's heard about him, you know? And he says, God, God, God is going to put you in my hands. See, that's faith. Now, it's not that you're belittling other people's... See, 
See, see, here's the problem. A lot of people think they're operating in faith when they make other people's problems small. That's not operating in faith. That's just the insensitivity of your heart. That's the hardness of your heart. What is faith is when you make your problems small because you attack them with the word of God. You go after them with the will of God. And you look to Jesus to get victory. Amen? Uh, Isaiah 26, 3. That will keep him, that will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee. Whew. So here's the key. If God's going to lead us and guide us and direct us, our mind has got to be on him. We've got to be looking to the, look to the hills from whence comes our, our help, the Lord word says. Thou will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee. Why? Because he trusteth in thee. That's why. That's why you're, you got perfect peace, perfect peace, perfect peace because your mind is stayed on him. Perfect, great peace have them. Great peace have them that love thy law. Great peace have them that love thy law. So in order for God to lead us and guide us, we got to love his word. Great peace have them that love thy law, and nothing shall offend them. I'm going, oh, man, that's my wife's favorite scripture to quote to me. Because <laughs> if I get offended, and, and you know what? <laughs> She'll say, honey, great peace have them that love thy law, and nothing shall offend them. <laughs> but I can't use that scripture on her, you understand. <laughs> but she uses it on me. And, and you know what? I'm not offended by that because I'm thinking, yeah, what's wrong with me? Great peace have them that love thy law, and nothing shall offend them. So, Lord, I, I shouldn't be offended. Nothing should offend me, nothing. You know, Jesus did not. They slapped him. They spit on him. They ripped the beard out of his face. They lied about him. They connived. They tried to kill him over and over even before the, the, the night he was betrayed. And yet he never got bitter at him. Never had bitterness. He never had bitterness. He never got bitter one moment. Not bitter. Not bitter. You want to mean by bitter? You know what's sweet and what's bitter. Your taste tongue, your tongue knows what's bitter and what's sweet. And so, great peace. Say great peace. Great peace have them that love thy law, and nothing shall offend them. And so, when I don't have great peace, then I know I'm not trusting God, Be because we read that thou will keep them in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed. When you're worried, when you're fretting, when you're upset, when you're mad, when you're angry, when you're fussing, when you're fretting, when your heart is racing, <laughs> your mind ain't stayed on him. You're worried about something. Just trust God. See, the devil loves to manipulate us and control us. But when you have great peace, when you go, okay, do what you got. Go ahead. You're going to kill me? Go ahead. I've been there. I'm telling you, we, we, uh, when I was in the Philippines one time, and I had been there three times before this, and I've been holding crusades, going out into very dangerous areas where they had the MPA, the New People's Army, which was actually connected to the established Catholicism, and they were trying to overthrow the government, and they hated what they called the born again, and we were the born again people. And... Um, <clears throat> And one day I'm over there. I'm over there one time doing meetings, and I got done with the meetings. And up out of my mouth came this. I said, "Where is the most dangerous place to be in this part of the Philippines?" And they looked at me and they said, "What?" I said, "Where is the most dangerous place to be?" They said, "There is an island called Leung." He and I said, "Why is it dangerous?" They said, "There is no Christian church. There's, there's a Catholic church, but you know, they didn't mean anything." There is no Christian church there. They said they, two missionaries went in there, Baptist, and they slit their throats. They killed them. And the Spirit of God out of my mouth said, tell them I'm coming. They said, what? I said, I'm going to give you the money. I said, make the flyers. We're going to come and hold meetings there. They said, really? I said, yes. Tell them I'm coming. I had total, complete peace. And so I was gone for about two, three months. I scheduled to come back. They said, the flyers are out. They said, Pastor Mike, we want you to know they're waiting for you. I said, what? The communists are waiting for you. They, they dare you. They double dog dare you, you might say, to come to their island. I had complete, absolute peace. I could not wait to get to that island. Why? It was the peace that passes understanding. 
I was being led by the peace of God. Now, if I would have had torment, now I was over there one time. The second time I was over there, and the first time I just, I didn't realize it was that dangerous. The second time I was over there, some of the guys I knew they had killed that had been with me, some Filipinos, and they told me how they would cut your head off, stick it on a pole in the town square, and people would come out and see the stump of your head. And so I would literally, I'd be trying to sleep at night, and I would see my head cut off with the blood running out and, and, and parts of my neck. I mean, I could see it, man, on a, on a round pole stuck in a, uh, like a four-foot uh, pole or, or fence post in the town square. And so I had to pray my way through, and I finally got the victory. But anyway, so we got to the Philippines. We got out there, and I could show you on Google Map where it was at. And we got into these real long canoes, and they had kickers on the back, motors on the back. And we're out there, and I'm in the very front. We're coming up to this island. We had two boats. And they're, sure enough, they're all lined along the shore. And they all got their guns and their machetes. And I'm telling you, the Spirit of God came on me. I stood up like George Washington going over the uh, Delaware, was it, or the, the Delaware River. And I put my foot on the front. We hit the sand, and I jumped off. And when I walked towards them, they split their, like the Red Sea, and we had a mighty move of God there. But see, that was the peace that passes understanding. Pastor, can you verify that? Yeah, Brian Showbaker was there, plus all the guys who I'm in relationship over through Facebook now, the, the Montez brothers, they, they, the Hurley, not Hurley, but Danny and all these guys were there. They saw it. Well, see, that's the peace that passes understanding, being led by peace, being going, being, going forth with joy and being led by peace. Uh, it says, for he, listen, for he is our peace, Ephesians 2.14. It says, for he is our peace who has made both one. Christ is my peace and have made both one and broken down a middle wall partition between us. So Christ is my peace. So when I've got my, my mind and my heart on Christ, I've got perfect peace. Uh, Isaiah 9, 6 is tremendous. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder. Listen. And his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. So the peace of God should rule and reign in my heart. Christ should rule and reign in my heart. But when I get out of the peace of God, you know, where there's envy and strife, there's bitterness, there's confusion, every even work. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure, peaceable. Pure, peaceable, gentle, easy to be entreated, full of mercies, good fruit, without partiality and without hypocrisy. And the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace by them that make peace. Notice, peace, peace, peace in a believer's life. We have peace. When we lose our peace, we're out of the will of God. You know, it's just like even physically. When the heart begins to race, you know, the first thing the doctor does is go, something's wrong here. Your heartbeat is way too fast. Your blood pressure is way too low. They can tell life is in the blood, okay? How can you tell when you're in the will of God? You'll have peace. Peace. I've got peace like a river. I've got peace like a river. I've got peace like a river in my soul. I've got peace like a river. I've got... Pastor, did you lose your peace this morning? Yeah, do you know why? I got out of the will of God. When you get out of the will of God, you lose your peace. Now, like I said, though, at one time I, didn't, I never knew what the peace of God was. Okay? So he, he's called the Prince of Peace. Um, Psalms 85, 7, Show us thy mercy, O Lord, and grant us thy salvation. I will hear what God the Lord will speak, for he will speak peace unto his people and to his saints, but let them not turn again to folly. Did you hear what he said? He says he will speak peace to his people. He will speak peace to his people, but let them not return again to their folly. How many have ever gone to your folly? <laughs> like a pig to the mud or like a dog to a vomit. And when you do that, you lose the peace of God. I like this scripture, Isaiah 57, 19. I create the fruit of the lips. Fruit of the lips. What's the fruit of the lips? Peace. Peace. How about, blessed are the peacemaker, for they shall inherit the kingdom of God. Blessed are the peacemaker. Now, you know what? It doesn't say blessed are the troublemakers. Well, I know it's hard to believe, but do you know there's people who like to stir up trouble? No, 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 no. Hey, I hate to tell you this. As a Christian, 
One thing I used to do, which was not God, I like to aggravate people. No, I thought it was funny. I thought it was funny to aggravate people. You know, and there's something demonic about it because, you know, I mean, when you <laughs> you look like a little devil. <laughs> you like to, well, that ain't, you don't know what spirit you're of. Oh, it may be putting a smile on your face. <laughs> I just got that person mad. They're so mad, they're spitting nails, you know. I mean, they're spitting cotton, but it ain't God. It doesn't say, blessed are the strife causers. Matter of fact, we're cursed. Remember, you're going to reap what you sow, you know. Um, my daughter, I tell you, I, I've got to, I, I, I've got to watch it because my sense of humor is so bizarre. I'll be laughing and nobody, everybody else looking at me like you're nuts. What are you laughing about? How come you think that's funny? So there must be, there must, it must mean there must be need to be a renewing of my mind in some areas. Now I'm sure none of you guys need to get any of your your minds renewed, but you know. I mean, one time somebody gave my, my family and I a, a video of a Christian preacher comedian. I put it into, this was when they had the, uh, not DVDs, but when they had the old, big old um, VHSs. We put it in there, and this Christian well-known speaker, if I mention him, you know who it was. He began to tell some jokes, and, and the whole place is just coming on glued, but it was sexually orientated and twisted, and we... It grieved us so much, we said, take them off, take them off, take them off. But everybody else was laughing. Well, that, that's a, a bunch of unrenewed minds. But it says, I create the fruit of peace, peace to him that is afar off, and to him that is near, say the Lord, and I will heal him. Who? The people who are led forth with peace. But the wicked, listen to this, but the wicked are like the troubled sea when it cannot rest. Now, I've been out there on the troubled sea. Whew, waves. Y'all have been out there in some troubled water a little bit down in the bay, haven't you? Okay? But the wicked are like the troubled sea when it cannot rest, whose waters cast up mire and dirt, always stirring things up, stirring things up. There is no peace, saith my God, to the wicked. No peace. You know, I think that's why half of the American adults are on sleeping medication. Something's wrong, man. Well, I know what it is. It's what they're watching. It's what they're reading. That stuff gets into their mind, and there's no peace. Their mind ain't stayed on him. Their mind has stayed on the stories they watched, the books they're reading, the newspaper accounts, the news. Hey, I've been guilty of the news and stuff, man. I've been guilty of getting my mind on things I had no right having my mind on. Maybe things the world says it's okay to think about, but God says, uh, perfect peace, have them who love that law, and, and the mind who stayed on him has, has perfect peace. And it says, but the wicked have no peace. Romans 14, 17, this is a description as, of the kingdom as we're getting ready to close. For the kingdom of God is not meat and drink. Kingdom of God is not physical. Kingdom of God is not cars and houses. Jesus said that. He said the, the heathen consider that stuff important. He said, that's not important to me. You understand Physical material things are not important to God. It's nothing to God. As a matter of fact, one guy was going to follow him, and he said, no, wait a minute, before you follow me, because he knew the man's heart, he said, the only place the Son of Man has to lay his head at, head at times, many nights, is, is a rock. That's his pillow. So Jesus walked in such a realm of peace, and I have been there at times, where it didn't matter where you slept, it didn't matter what you ate, and it did not matter what you were wearing. It didn't matter. When I've gone to other countries, especially countries where I'm going, and I know I'm going into a, a very rough environment, I, I'm very, very selective if I take anybody with me because, because one thing you dare not have when you get into a, a, a situation out there where your, your life is endangered, you dare not have a whining, complaining, moaning, groping attitude. You've got to have a cheerful attitude, a bright, a, 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 a good outlook. And you just, here we go, like Angel Perez. When he goes, I guarantee he don't guarantee. Now, he's been with me. We've gone places together, 
And I'll tell you what, like we took that old rickety van out here and the thing is, and, 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 and I, I had to get them to the turnpike before they said, turn around and go back, Pastor Mike, because it was like, and the wind's whistling through the doors and it's cold and it was an icy, it was during December here, a couple, two Decembers ago. And I mean, that's when the men's conference is, right, in December. And, and you know what? Angel was sitting up front because he, you know, we let him have the front seat over. And he just, what he did, coming back and going, he just put a, he put a, uh, his coat over his head and he just prayed. And he slept and he prayed. Now, I mean, he's up there and he's had problems with his back. He's had physical problems in his body. Not one word of complaint ever came out of his mouth. Not one complaint. That's, that's when you know when you're with a man of God. When they don't complain. No matter what. It's going to be okay. It's all right. God will take care of it. He has peace. An amazing peace that passes understanding. And you get around other people, they get aggravated at the littlest things. They get upset at the littlest things. You know they're not being led by God. They don't have peace. But it says, you know, God gives you peace that passes understanding. For the kingdom of God is not made to drink, but righteousness, means you're going to live right no matter what, peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Uh, now the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that you may abound in hope through the power of the Holy Ghost, Romans 15, 13. Uh, Psalms 105, 43. And he brought forth his people with joy and his chosen with gladness. Do you know heaven is a place of nothing but singing? Singing, joy. Heaven is nothing but joyful. I mean, we, I don't know if you know this, how, are you guys, are we going to be able to handle living in a place where there's nothing but happy people all the time? Have you ever seen somebody so happy you just wanted to sm just whack the smile off their face? How can you be so happy? That's all heaven is. Heaven is just joy, peace, love, and righteousness. I'm telling you right now, there's a lot of people who won't want to live there. There's so many, uh, you know, there's so many scriptures... Uh, therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. We have peace through God. Jeremiah 33, 6, Behold, I will bring in health and cure, and I will cure them, and I will reveal to them an abundance of peace and truth. Peace and truth and love and hope and joy always go hand in hand together. Peace, love, joy. Faith, it always goes hand in hand together. They, they, they're chums. They're buddies. They like to hang around together. Peace and joy and love and truth and hope and faith. Man, they like to just hang out together. You know what I mean? They're just buddies, brothers and sisters in Christ, you know? They just love it. And it says, And all thy children shall be taught of the Lord, and great shall be the peace of thy children. Great peace have them which love thy law, and nothing shall offend them. And the work of righteousness shall be, this is the work of righteousness, shall be peace. And the effect of righteousness, quietness and assurance forever. What do you mean quietness and assurance forever? That means that, means that when, you're, when you're being led by peace, when you go out with joy and you're being led forth with peace, you have, just, you have this, this calm assurance, not cockiness, not arrogance, just it's going to be okay. I don't know how it's going to be okay. I don't know. It doesn't look like it's going to be okay. It looks like we're gone. It looks like we're not going to survive. But you know what? It's going to be okay. As long as you're in the will of God. So when you get out of the will of God, what do you do? You don't justify it. You don't ignore it. You don't deny it. You go, oh, God, I blew it again. I messed up again. I missed the mark again. No, oh Lord, I repent. I confess it. Now, the devil's going to be there because once you repent and you're truly sorry, he's going to be there to try to rub your face in the mud. And then people get confused with that. See, so confess your sins, and he's faithful and just to forgive you and to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. So, well, Pastor Mike, how many times can you sin a day and get away with it? Well, we're not trying to get away with it, Okay. But we know this, Jesus said, if somebody does you wrong, you've got to forgive them seven times, 70 times. Is it seven times 70 or 70 times 70? 
Okay, and that comes up to how much? 490 times. I know it's funny. I'm not mathematical. <laughs> no, don't be happy because I'm stupid. <laughs> 490 times a day. Now listen, if we're required to forgive 490 times a day, how many times think that God forgives us? Oh, man. Non-ending. Amen. Well, I hope you got something out of this message tonight. The 14th way to be led by the Spirit of God is by peace and joy. Amen.